How's everyone doing in the late morning? Hands up if you're doing awesome. Yeah, all right. <laughs> everyone, everyone is doing awesome. And, and who's ready for a data-driven society? This, okay, so it was about 90%. This is uh, from my own data taking here. 90% were doing awesome, and it looked like a little, little fewer than that are ready, ready for this. But I think Vivi will, uh, will show us, uh, we'll get that number up to 100%. Uh, as as we talk, I want to get the name of name of your your you're talking about for a fair, sustainable, and prosperous digital society, uh, and then you will also stick around for a panel afterwards. So we we have kind of a a full track here all the way up until till lunch. So uh, first, I want to welcome Vivi to start to kick us off. Thank you. You're very kind. Uh, let me just get set up here. All right. Uh, so my data for a fair, sustainable and prosperous society is my topic today. Um, so bonjour, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to, to be in Paris. Uh, not an absolute pleasure getting around Paris right now, but uh, I've, I've made it here and I'm very, very glad to, to be able to speak to you today. Um, my name is Vivi Lahtenoya. It's a funny Finnish name for, for those of you who collect foreign names. Uh, and I'm the uh, Deputy General Manager for an organization called My Data Global. That's my contacts. I'll show them at the end as well. Um, so my angle to the topic of this entire conference and sort of tech for social good is through personal data. Um, by this time um, of, th of the morning, we will all have you know, learn something, used mobility services or not, as the case may be, uh, used uh, electricity, um, bought something, used an app, we've already generated masses of personal data uh, just by going about our daily lives. So it's, um, it's a truism, really, that personal data is absolutely everywhere. Um, it's becoming what's called a new economic asset class, a valuable resource um, for society um, and that will touch all aspects of society as well. Um, and you probably have heard personal data or data in general being referred to as the new something, the new oil, the new soil, new energy, uh, whatever, insert your favorite analogy there. Um, I would like to caution against those. Um, personally, I think there are a couple of things about personal data and data in general that are quite unique uh, and are very difficult to capture in an analogy like that. So one of these things is, for example, um, that um, um, uh, data is not scarce. Um, there's an infinite amount, no, there's a nearly infinite amount of it out there um, and it's not going to run out. So that's why the analogy with oil, for example, I think is a slightly poor one. Another thing is that data is not rivalrous. It's not that I have a set of data that I can use and only me. We can both have the same set of data. We can both use it for our own, our own purposes. We can uh, do different things with it. Um, and those things don't preclude each other. So this is why, again, data as the new soil um, doesn't quite work. Because if I want to plant olive trees and you want to plant um, orange trees, we're not going to be able to use the same plot of land, right? Um, so whenever, I, I understand that it's a, it's a very kind of tempting thing um, to kind of compare data to something that is easier to grasp, but I just want to kind of caution against that a little bit and, and kind of uh, keep in mind that data has all these different properties that are very difficult to actually capture in an analogy like this. Um, that should have some text on it. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, so, well, I'm here to talk about my data, so, so what is it really? Um, 
it can refer to a few different things. Um, it's an alternative vision for how personal data is handled. It's a set of guiding principles also for that. Uh, it's a global organization that I work for. Um, and it's also a series of meetings and, and conferences. And uh, for me personally, I'm a, I'm a philosopher by background, so I study ethics um, and the way um, uh, personal data and data in general are being used and ought to be used in the future. So I'm most interested in, in, in this kind of alternative vision of how we can create um, a data economy and a digital society that is ethically sustainable. So put very, very simply, the, the core idea of my data is that individuals and people, really, uh, should be in control of the data about them. Um, and you'll notice that I won't say things um, like control of their data or data that they own, um, because ownership is a, another one of those analogies that doesn't quite fit with personal data and can actually be a little bit misleading um, when talking about personal data. So I prefer to talk about uh, data about a person that rather than data that they own. So the My Data approach aims at strengthening digital human rights, uh, which are became becoming increasingly recognized um, as incredibly important in today's age. Um, and the approach also um, looks to strengthen opportunities um, and open up avenues for innovation um, for personal data-based services built on mutual trust for, for companies and organizations. Um, and here's a, a picture that I like to use to kind of position my data within, within the landscape. A lot of people, when they first hear about my data, they say, but you know, we're, we're in Europe, we have the GDPR, um, aren't we covered? Um, but that's not entirely the case. So the my data approach really tries to combine things that are good about the GDPR, and obviously it's not perfect. Uh, it's being accused of being stifling of innovation, for example, which I don't entirely agree with, um, but that, that is a, a critique of it. Um, but the my data kind of approach tries to combine those good um, aspects of strong legislation and strong data protection with also lots of data usage. So you'll see these two kind of main as uh, approaches to personal data in the world today, uh, which is this um, American Chinese big platforms, lots and lots of use of data um, versus then the European kind of, <laughs> someone's called uh, Europe, the uh, le a legislative superpower. Um, and my data kind of combines the, the upsides of, of both of those. My data is about using lots of data um, and kind of give getting benefits for people and societies at large um, from that data. So in, um, in 2017, the my data community came together and published a declaration. Um, in this declaration, um, we identify th three things that we see as being crucial to, to change right now, to go from where we are now to a more human-centric paradigm of personal data use. Uh, the, these three shifts that we work for are going from formal rights to actionable rights, or something like one-click rights. Like I mentioned, we have the GDPR, lots of fantastic things there. Everyone's favorite article, um, Article 20, the right to data portability is there. Um, but it's not exactly easy to port your data from one service and use it in another. So we need to shift towards more actionable rights that we have right, right now. The second shift we identified was going from data protection to, to data empowerment. Um, and this is really like a mental shift of thinking about people um, not as sort of like passive targets of, um, of protection in need of this sort of shielding from the big bad data world. No, uh, we need to think about people as active agents with will and desire to do good things for themselves, for society with data, um, instead of being scared of it, being confident to use it and benefit from it. Um, 
And then the third uh, shift that we like to see in, th in the world is going from closed to open ecosystems. And this is again somewhere um, like with the, with the f actionable rights, where APIs um, can really play a crucial role. So going from what we have now, which are basically virtual monopolies, we're all kind of locked into using certain platforms and services because there are no good real alternatives. Um, so moving away from that to an ecosystem where, for example, through APIs, um, any size of company uh, or organization can have access to the kind of data that they need to provide better um, and innovative services. That's the computer going to sleep. Um, and then Another thing that um, we describe in the declaration are the, the principles of what we want to achieve. So human-centric control of personal data, that should be fairly clear from now, uh, from, from what I've said before. And also individual as the point of integration. So instead of having your Facebook login as the point of integration between all these different sets of data about you on the online, it should be you, um, not something that's controlled by an external entity. Uh, we talk about individual empowerment, like I mentioned before. And then the, the fourth one and the sixth one, again, very relevant to, to the topic of this conference. Uh, we want to see portability, including access and reuse, um, and um, sort of harmonized APIs, for example, for that enable interoperability. And the fifth one also, um, which is close to my heart as an ethicist, obviously, is um, transparency and accountability in all actions and dealings with personal data. So my data for, for managing personal data is really an infrastructure level approach. Uh, it's not a single solution or a platform. We, my data global, we're not a company. We don't have a product or a platform that we're building or trying to sell. Um, it's really about transforming the entire system with which we use personal data. Um, and of absolute essence there are in data interoperability, portability, and international standards. And another thing that makes my data special is this kind of content-based control. So it's not really necessary for me to sit on some vault where I've put all my different data, if that were even somehow possible, that every data that is um, piece of data that is gathered about me is suddenly put into the same place. That's not necessary. Um, as long as I control the flow of data between the different repositories where it sits, um, that, is, that is enough. I don't have to build this magical vault where all my data goes. Um, and these are some of the requirements for this kind of infra infrastructure, um, technically. So we need machine-readable interfaces for personal data access, um, data format standardization, standardized agreements and dynamic consent frameworks, um, interoperability models, for consent management accounts and different kinds of personal data operators or consent operators. And then we need services and applications that utilize portable personal data. So these are some of the things um, on the kind of technical side that my data community at large are working on at the moment. Um, I won't go into detail about this, but these are some of the th some like another visualization of, of the kinds of things that are related to personal data, and the kind of bringing about the the human centric approach to managing personal data. Um, these are some of the companies at the moment um, working in this space. Uh, most of them aren't sort of household names; they're sort of building the the building blocks for the kinds of services that we all will be using. Um, and they're from, from all over the world. There's um, Australia, Finland, France, America, Japan, um, all over the world these, these companies exist. Um, and just before I wrap up, um, I've told you a little bit about what my data is and what it means. Um, and uh, so now I want to tell you uh, a little bit about what we at My Data Global have done and what you can do as well. So 
over several years, we have built a community of, of thousands and the foundation for a very strong movement. Um, the origins in Finland, uh, where our headquarters are, um, go back to 2012, where there was an, a big, big open knowledge festival. And um, I think it was, it was hundreds of people attending, um, lots of cool stuff going on. And then there was one breakout session with a handful of people who said, but hang on a minute, we can't just, there's a, a big chunk of data we just can't make open, and that's people's personal data. So what, what should we do, do about that? Um, and this is where the sort of individual thinkers and doers started pursuing projects. Eventually, we wrote a white paper um, in 2014. Um, it was commissioned by the Finnish government who have been pioneering my data and uh, have included my data in the government uh, agenda now uh, for the second time in a row. Um, the white paper was published in English in 2015 and suddenly people from all over the world started getting in touch with us, saying like, hey, you guys are thinking exactly what I've been saying for years and years and years. Um, what, you know, let's get together. Um, what, what is it that you think about this? What, what about that? Um, the European Commission then convened a round table um, in Brussels um, where um, a bunch of these different actors came together and that's where the kind of network, the MyData community started really. Um, in 2016, we organized our first conference in Helsinki and that's where the community kind of became self-aware really. People realized that, hang on, there are hundreds of people all around the world thinking about human-centric personal data uh, and we should work together. Um, so to, to give some sort of formal structure to, to this thinking and doing, we um, um, formalized into the, the first international nonprofit based in, in Finland just the at the end of last year. So we're about one year old at the moment um, as an organization. But like I mentioned, the thinking goes back to at least 2012, if not much earlier in other parts of the world. Um, as an organization, we're geographically very diverse. Um, most of our local hubs are at the moment in Europe, but we do have them on, on each of the con um, each continent. There's a very active um, French hub that's based here in Paris. Um, and like, uh, like I mentioned, our headquarters there in, in Helsinki. And we're also diverse in terms of who we are, what kind of kinds of backgrounds we have. Um, we believe very strongly that the, the personal data ecosystem, it's not going to be changed by one person, one company, one sector or domain. It has to be dealt with together uh, with professionals and actors from all different sectors of society, so business, legal, tech, um, and, and different societal actors. Um, so just to conclude, um, the battle over personal data is the defining issue of tomorrow's digital economy. And the, m what my data does is shifts the current paradigm of power uh, from personal data often misused and it, is, it serves to empower people. Um, our goal is to make human-centric personal data globally known to, to implement this shift. And together, we can build a fair, sustainable, and prosperous digital society for all. And here's where you can find out more. Join the Slack, join the organization, and uh, find out more about who we are and how you can help. Thank you. That's great. Questions for Vivi? Hi, Vivi. Hi there. Uh, uh, difficult question. Uh, do you think it can w metaphors about what data is mm. can work? If yes, what's the best metaphor you can use to evangelize about personal data to your mind, right? If there is one best. I, I haven't found one that I'm particularly happy with, to be honest. Like I said, I'm a philosopher by training, so uh, I, I like to have all the details map out very, very clearly when I start using uh, analogies. I, I especially hate oil. 
if that answers your question, that's a particularly bad one to use. Uh, but I think we should strive together to, to find a way to communicate this very complex idea um, to, to in, a, in ways that is, is more kind of like a tangible, uh, but it's really difficult, uh, is what I'm saying. Why? Because uh, why is the oil is so bad? Um, it's um, it's bad because the o the only thing oil and data have in common is that they are very valuable. So it's like saying data are the new diamonds. It, it's that's that's basically the only thing they have in common. That's my my take on that. All right, I I have. One on sort of the technical side, you you didn't go deep into when you showed all those different areas, but one I'm curious about is if my identity is me, what's the what's the technical side of that? Is it open ID? Is it some other technology? That's a very good question. Um, identity is very crucial to to my data for f uh, reasons that aren't necessarily immediately obvious, but I mean, when you think about it, like if, if you're talking about personal data, there's a way, there has to be a way to link data to that person, right? So identity is actually very, very central to, to my data thinking and, and solving identity. So one of the biggest things that's happening uh, within my data and in the identity space right now is self-sovereign identity. Um, so that's where we're looking at mostly at the moment. Um, I do have to say that, that we, as my data, are, are very strictly technology agnostic. Uh, we don't want to try to pick the market winners or the ones that eventually win out. We want to make sure that the options are um, compatible with my data type of thinking um, rather than sort of promote a single technology. Yes, if I may. Hello, I'm Emmanuel. I have a question uh, on the physical philosophical aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I like interoperability very much. I hate standardization very much. Mm -hmm. And in the same sentence you had like interoperability and standardization. I think it's the opposite way around. Standard is we were all the same. Interoperability is we were all different, but we were able to to communicate. So how about this? So. D is your assertion that we can have true interoperability um, without standardiza standardization? Yes, I think so. How do you do that? When, how, how do you, I mean, this is boggling me. Um, I, I think that's a, a super interesting idea. So is it a kind of um, harmonization that happens um, without standards bodies? Or, but I mean, there has to be a de facto standard, right? For certain things. The thing is, I hate the principle of winner takes it all, and here technology kinds of have that trend, like yes. the best solution, the best practice, the best in class, the winner takes mm -hmm. it all. And standard means we all have to to go in the same framework. Yes. And uh, humankind, if you're uh, people-centered, it's the opposite way around. Uh, let's be different, let's not establish standard, let's have common goals, let's have common way, common purpose, but without the standard part of the way. And interoperability would be us being able to exchange data uh, in, in this uh, thing, but without a standard, because sure. someone has to define a standard. Yes. And then it's one to rule them all. I don't necessarily agree that standards create the one to rule all um, kind of paradigm or the winner takes all. I think well-crafted standards are ones which force interoperability and which force openness um, and actually do the opposite of enabling the, the kind of winner takes all. Because if we have just sort of giants with proprietary tech uh, which, do, which don't interoperate with anything, um, standards can be a way of kind of coaxing them out of that position. Um, if a widely adopted standard emerges, um, for them to be competitive, um, they would need to adopt that as well. But I need to think about this more. I think uh, it's a good challenging question. Thank you. All right, and thank you for the great presentation. <laughs>